In our last food storage video, we talked about getting started with a one to three month food supply of meals that your family loves. We talked about why everyone should have food storage and how to start and implement your family's custom food storage plan. Well, today we're gonna go into more detail about where and how to store your food. If you're making the effort to get prepared and have food storage for your family, then you're gonna wanna be sure that your food is stored properly so your efforts aren't in vain. I'm Stephanie from SixFiguresUnder.com. On this channel, I share frugal inspiration and financial motivation to help families pay off debt and reach their financial goals. Thank you to all of you in our subscriber community. I love hearing from you in the comments. If you're new here, I would love for you to click subscribe and join our wonderful community. If you don't have the food storage planning printables yet that I talked about in the last food storage video, I'll leave a link below so you can get them and get started on your family's custom food storage plan. If you need help planning, check out my first food storage video for an easy to use plan for storing meals you'll actually eat. Okay, let's get going. First we'll talk about how to store your food, then we'll talk about some options for where to store your food. How to store the foods in your food storage. If you're like me, your food storage will be a combination of different food storage containers and methods. There's no one right way. You have to find a balance between cost and convenience, all while making sure your food is safe to eat and maintains as much nutrition as possible. Many containers can be stored just the way you buy them. Others take a little more maintenance. For example, jars of peanut butter and jam can be stored just the way they are. Canned food can simply be set on the shelf to store. Easy peasy. Pantry staples like flour, beans, rice, pasta, oats, cereals, and other grains, and box mixes, including any of these ingredients, can be infested with weevils, mites, moths, or other bugs, depending on where you live and your climate. It's important to store them in airtight containers so they aren't spoiled by insects. The big problem is that sometimes these foods actually come with bug eggs, larvae, or adults packaged with them when you get them at the store. The best way to deal with this is to freeze the product for at least 24 hours when you get it home from the store. Sounds simple enough, but when you're buying in bulk, it could be more complicated, especially if you don't have a deep freezer. After spending time in the freezer, products should be stored in airtight containers. I'll get more into containers in just a second. I've also read that storing a bay leaf or several bay leaves in your airtight container of rice or flour will keep the food products safe from bugs. Honestly, I haven't had any issues with bugs in food. It may be because we're in Northern California in a dry climate and weevils and other food bugs prefer a moist climate. Up to this point, I haven't made the practice of putting newly purchased grain in the freezer before storing it. And so far, so good. Okay, let's talk about containers. Canned foods are a great option. We don't typically buy a lot of canned foods, they just aren't our normal staples, but when it comes to food storage, they're great. Sure, we prefer fresh or frozen veggies over canned veggies in most cases, but if fresh and frozen aren't options, canned foods are great. Plus, they're much more affordable than their freeze-dried counterparts. If you use the food storage planning guide that I talked about in the last video, I'll link that video here in case you missed it, because you'll probably want to start there. You probably have canned goods on your list of shelf-stable ingredients for, the, for your recipes. That's great. Even if you don't regularly use canned foods, they're great to have in your food storage. It doesn't mean you have to regularly use them. For example, I'm storing more cream of chicken and cream of mushroom soup than we ever use, as you'll see in my upcoming grocery haul in a few days. I usually make my own from scratch, but having cans is really convenient when eating from food storage. The same goes for spaghetti sauce. I make and can my own tomato puree for spaghetti sauce, but I like to have canned spaghetti sauce in my food storage when I'm in a pinch. Another great thing is that canned foods have a very long shelf life. We'll be talking more about expiration dates and rotating food storage a little further along in this food storage series, but for now, know that canned foods are safe to eat well past the dates on the cans. According to the Canned Food Alliance, Canned food has a shelf life of at least two years from the date of processing. Canned food retains its safety and nutritional value well beyond two years, but it may have some variation in quality, such as a change of color and texture. In fact, canned food has an almost indefinite shelf life at moderate temperatures, 75 degrees Fahrenheit and below. 
Canned food as old as a hundred years has been found in sunken ships and is still microbiologically safe. We don't recommend keeping canned food for over a hundred years, but if the can is intact, it is edible. Rust or dents do not affect the contents of the can as long as the can does not leak. If the can is leaking, however, or if the ends are bulged, the food should not be used. So if the can is intact, there's no reason to throw out canned food past the date stamped on the can. It's edible and may just save your life in an emergency. Another nice thing about canned food as opposed to dehydrated food is that canned food already contains water. In some situations where you're eating from your food storage, you'll have a limited water supply. Having foods that don't require extra water is really convenient. For storing convenience, I like to buy canned foods in the case or the flat at the grocery store. This just means grabbing the cut down cardboard that the 12 cans came in. At a store like Sam's Club, you can buy 6 to 12 cans in a thin cardboard case which acts as an easy dispenser. It's convenient to be able to store the case flat or on its end. Glass canning jars are a great option for food storage. As long as the rims are free from chips and cracks, glass canning jars can be reused again and again. You will need to get new flat lids each time, but you can reuse the jars and rings. We probably have 300, 400, 500, I'm not sure, jars that we reuse over and over again canning fruits and vegetables. I'm even planning to start canning meats as well. Some people use a water bath canner. I use a steam canner for everything that you would use a water bath canner for. You know, high acid things like tomatoes, peaches, pears, applesauce. Then I use a pressure canner for low acid foods like green beans and meats. You can also can dry foods in glass jars. If you have a food saver with a jar sealer attachment, you can remove the air from items like rice, oats, and flour and greatly increase the shelf life of items like chocolate, raisins, and nuts. Food grade plastic buckets. We have food grade plastic buckets that we got during our law school years for free from a friend who worked at the craft factory. They originally held mayonnaise, but we cleaned them out and have been using them ever since. We use them for wheat, oats, sugar, flour, rice, pasta, beans, and any other bulk foods that we store. The only regret I have is that we didn't get more. What I love about plastic buckets is they can be reused over and over. They're great for storing food that you're rotating through as opposed to a get it and forget it sort of food storage. You can use what you've stored in the plastic buckets to refill your pantry containers of flour, sugar, rice, etc. You can even get food grade buckets for free. For example, from the bakery at your local grocery store, they get a lot of ingredients like frosting in these food grade buckets and they just throw them out. So if you ask, they'll likely give them to you or save them for you. You can also try asking at restaurants. If you want to order buckets, you can get them on Amazon right along with the lids. The buckets come in all sorts of sizes. I don't recommend getting anything bigger than six gallons as those get pretty heavy when they're filled with beans or rice. Three to five gallons is ideal. The best deal I found was for five gallon buckets at in-store at Walmart. Be sure to get the lids too. You can either get regular snap-on lids or you can get the gamma lids that screw on. The downside with plastic buckets is that they aren't best for extended long-term food storage. Air can penetrate through plastic which will cause the food to break down over time. It's still edible but not as high quality. For example, beans will harden and darken, meaning they need to be cooked longer. Powdered milk may clump, which makes it more annoying to use. If you want to use them for long-term food storage, and when I say long-term, I mean like five to 30 plus years, you can, but you'll probably want to line them with mylar bags and use oxygen absorbers. We don't do that because we use these buckets for food that we rotate through within a few months to a few years. Okay, number 10 cans. This large can size is called a number 10 can. Number 10 cans are a common way to store long-term food storage. It's often written with the hashtag or pound sign, but it doesn't mean it's 10 pounds. The weight depends on what's inside. The huge benefit of these cans is that the food stored in them has a very long, often indefinite shelf life. You can get cases of six number 10 cans through the home storage centers of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or their online store. I guarantee that this is the best price you will find for can-sealed food of this kind anywhere. 
They're a nonprofit with an interest in helping people be spiritually, financially, and physically prepared for whatever life has in store. For example, you can currently get six number 10 cans of wheat for $35.70, and shipping is only $3. Each can of wheat berries weighs five and a half pounds. Wheat stored this way will last 30 or more years. If you can pick up a case at a home storage center instead, you'll save a ton of money. A case of six cans of wheat is currently $24 if you pick it up at the home storage center. The prices are updated periodically throughout the year. I'll leave links to all those below. These home storage centers have lots of long-lasting staples like rice, beans, pasta, sugar, flour, and oats. You'll want to call ahead and see if they're open and when, as I'm sh not sure how the pandemic has affected things. Because you have to account for the cost of processing it into number 10 cans, some of the staples like sugar and rice, for example, cost more per pound than what you'd pay if you were just buying a 25 pound bag at the grocery store. But with the number 10 cans, you don't have to do anything to make them last for decades. I try not to use the food that we have stored in number 10 cans because they last so long and are so easy to store. Instead, we rotate through what we have stored in buckets and save the number 10 cans for really long-term storage. Mylar bags. You can repackage food into Mylar bags for long-term food storage. The downside of Mylar bags is that while they keep moisture out, they aren't actually rodent proof. It doesn't take much for a rodent to chew a hole through a Mylar bag. The tough thing about Mylar bags is that they aren't uniform in size, so they don't stack very well. Like I mentioned earlier, some people use large Mylar bags inside plastic buckets, so they get the benefits of both. Let's talk about where to store your food storage. Every home and family is different, so there's no one-size-fits-all answer for where to store your food storage, but I can give you some ideas. Lots of people's initial reaction to the idea of storing one month, three months, or a year of food is, I don't have space for that. I'll repeat what I said before about this. If having food storage is important to you, you can make it happen. There may not be room to add a three month supply of food to your house at this very minute, but where there's a will, there's a way. You may have to make a choice. You may need to do some decluttering or downsize other areas of your life, but you can make it work. You can fit a one year supply of food for one person under a twin size bed. Maybe there's something else stored under there right now, but does it bring the kind of security you get knowing that your kids won't starve? Could you store what's under that bed in the garage and keep food under the bed instead? Do you have a coat closet that you could take over with food storage? It might not be the most glamorous solution, but if food storage is a priority, you can make it happen. Becca is a perfect example of this. She commented to say that her family of eight lives in a 1,250 square foot manufactured home and currently their food storage is in their hallway. She doesn't love it there, but she sees food storage as a priority so she makes it work. Way to go, Becca. The best place for food storage is somewhere that's cool, dry, and dark. For some people, this rules out the garage, but if your garage is cool and dry, and many garages actually are, it can be a great place for food storage where it's convenient but also out of the way. A basement is an ideal place for food storage. You don't have to have a dedicated room for food storage. It doesn't have to be near your kitchen. Think outside the box. Is there space in your laundry area? Could you trade out things from an infrequently used closet? Could you put your bed up on risers or cinder blocks to make more space under there? We've even used both at once. But do that at your own risk. We've raised up our bed everywhere we've lived. A tall bed has given us lots of extra storage space. We don't have food under our bed now, but we did it for many years. And we actually do have buckets of wheat under one of the kids' beds right now. If you use a garage or basement, you shouldn't put your food storage directly on the cement floor. Cement gets too damp for that. You'll want to put down some wood boards or pallets to keep your food containers up off the cement. I've seen some really creative ways to incorporate food storage into your home. I've seen it dressed up under tablecloths to act as end tables or under couches to make stadium seating, creating shelving by putting boards across buckets. If I didn't have pantry and garage space, which thankfully we have now, I'd store our food storage under everyone's beds. 
I'd love to hear your ideas for what you've done or what you've seen done. Making food storage a priority really is worth the hassle and effort. Okay, we have a lot more coming up in our food storage series, so if you aren't subscribed yet, just click subscribe so you don't miss out. In future videos, we'll talk about expiration dates and how to rotate your food storage so nothing goes to waste. We'll cover more on long-term food storage and some foods we think every family should be storing. Let me know your specific food storage questions down in the comments so I can be sure to cover them in this series. Okay, we'll see you in the next one.